Hello and welcome to House Raid, my Game of Thrones and a Song of Ice and Fire theorising channel, where ordinarily I look at look at the works of George R. R. Martin from the perspective of a writer and the techniques often used in the craft of writing to make predictions about what will happen in the future and gain a deeper understanding of what is happening presently in the books and the TV show. This video, however, I'm going to be looking at science. Recently I've been thinking a lot about the nature of the planet where Game of Thrones takes place and wondering whether the seasons of the planet, the winter is coming and so on, can be used to gain a greater understanding of what sort of planet A Song of Ice and Fire is set on. So in order to understand how this might work, first I think you have to understand how the nature of a planet's orbit round its sun affects its seasons. The axis of the Earth is an imaginary line on which the Earth rotates. It links up the two poles. Both the axis and the Earth are tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees during a revolution. The tilting of the axis results in direct sunlight falling on different places during different seasons. This causes variations in the duration of days, nights and seasons. Relationship between the location of the overhead sun and the seasons. Similarly, the revolution of the Earth and the tilting of the axis results in different angle of the sun during different periods. When the sun is directly overhead, we call this the overhead sun. At this time, the Earth's surface and the midday sun forms a 90 degree angle. Different locations of the overhead sun results in variations in the amount of solar radiation received in different areas and at different periods. So I don't really know that much about science, but luckily there's some people who've done that work for us. In a paper called Winter is Coming, submitted for publication in the Old Town Journal of Evil Omens, five, uh, uh, five astronomy and physics students have come up with a paper trying to understand the world of Game of Thrones and its seasons. These students are called Veselin Kostov, Daniel Allen, Nikolaus Hartmann, Scott Guswich, and Justin Rogers. Here we attempt to explain the apparently erratic seasonal changes in the world of GRRM. A natural explanation for such phenomena is the unique behavior of a circumbinary planet. Thus, by speculating that the planet under scrutiny is orbiting a pair of solar-type stars, we utilize the power of numerical three-body dynamics to predict that, unfortunately, it is not possible to predict either the length or the severity of any coming winter. In their paper they explore many possibilities as to why the seasons in Westeros are unusual as they are. One of the possibilities that they look at is a wobble on that planet's axis. A wobbly planet's axis would obviously create a variability and unpredictability of the seasons. The stable tilt of Earth's axis keeps a swirl out of all this trouble. Although some have blamed Westrosi seasons on a wobbly planetary axis, we reject this suggestion as nothing more than sinister castly rock propaganda. As even Sir Gregor could tell you, a planetary moon precludes axial excursions by stabilizing the tilt. Now, the reason that they reject this hypothesis is because the planet of Game of Thrones has a moon and moons stabilize wobbly orbits, meaning that this explanation is not possible. Another possibility they consider is the possibility of the eccentric orbit. So what exactly is orbital eccentricity? Orbital eccentricity is the amount by which an orbit deviates from a circle. 
Mathematically, it's defined as the distance between the two foci of an elliptical orbit divided by the major axis. A circle has an ellipticity, denoted by the little symbol E, of zero. In the solar system, most of the planets have small eccentricity and are close to circular. Eccentricity of the Earth's orbit is 0.017, one and a half percent. The only two planets where the orbital eccentricity is above 10% are Pluto, with an eccentricity of 0.25, and Mercury, with an eccentricity of 0.21. These large numbers probably indicate interactions during the history of the solar system with large bodies, or perhaps, in the case of Pluto, capture from a distant region of space. So is orbital eccentricity a suitable explanation for what is going on in Game of Thrones? Myriad extrasolar planets, discovered over the past two decades, have undermined our solar system's sense of importance and expanded the variety of planetary orbits. Consider the cruel eccentric orbit, which exacts harsh, long winters while its planet dallies far from its star. Is this the planet we are looking for? The winters fit, but no, we have gone too far. The privileged might stay warm, five, but suffering farmers, rushed to sow and reap during a ruthlessly short perihelion, would ultimately embrace the cold side and join the swelling ranks of the others, six. The continents would be overrun by lifeless husks. They're saying that an eccentric orbit couldn't explain the bizarre climatology of the planet of Game of Thrones because it would result in some areas of the planet remaining in perpetual cold that was so cold everything would die in it completely and other areas of the planet where it would get so hot that they would be deserted. Effectively, it means there would be a stability of that instability. So a eccentric orbit couldn't really explain this difficulty. So this really only leaves one possibility left and that is the possibility of a binary star system. So what exactly is a binary star system? About half of all the stars in the night sky are really a pair of stars held together by gravity. Where two stars can be seen separately in a telescope, their slow orbital motion over many years can be followed directly. They swing about the balancing point between them in elliptical orbits. Some pairs are so close, only their combined spectrum reveals that there are two stars. As the stars travel round their orbits, they each move alternately towards and then away from us. The dark lines in their spectra are first red-shifted and then blue-shifted because of this motion. The spectrum lines shuffle back and forth against the rainbow background of the spectrum. And a two-star binary system is basically the most logical choice for Westeros as their paper concludes. One sun and one planet give periodic vanilla orbits. We must abandon Caplerium monogamy and explore multiple bodies. Fortunately, the many-body problem has been solved repeatedly, some might say gratuitously, in Westeros. Our planet will have two stars. There is, of course, one problem with their conclusion, and that is that you'd think at some point one of the characters, especially perhaps a maester, would have noted the fact that their planet has two suns, um, which, as far as I know, nobody has noted. But it's a relatively small problem. Anyway, this video has just been a bit of fun, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and, and maybe learnt a bit about science along the way. If you like this video, then like it, and if you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe for more?